Welcome to this week's Bible in the News. Time and time again, the secular media pushes the idea that science is at odds with the Bible. That to believe in the Bible is almost to believe in a fairy tale and that modern science has helped mankind to rise above the archaic fantasies and legends of the ancients. For this reason, there is no need to believe in a god. The floodgates are open to the doctrines of humanism. Do what you like, as long as you do not hurt another being. The theory of evolution is championed as the method that has produced the universe in which we operate and generated life upon this planet. There is no higher authority than chance, and therefore there is no requirement to adhere to any restrictions to human enjoyment. This is at complete odds with the teachings of the Bible. In 1925, less than a hundred years ago, the state of Tennessee put on trial one John Scopes. His charge was that he taught evolution in his state-funded school. He was found guilty and fined. How things have changed in 100 years. We are now in a full reversal of this. It being more likely teachers will be struck off for refusing to teach evolution as fact. In 2013, a new national curriculum was introduced into the UK. Within it contains, in the Year 6 programme of study, a section entitled Evolution and Inheritance, which includes the following requirements. Pupils should be taught to recognise that living things have changed over time and that fossils provide information about living things that inhabited the earth millions of years ago. Recognise that living things produce offspring of the same kind, but normally offspring vary and are not identical to their parents. Identify how animals and plants are adapted to suit their environment in different ways, and that adaptation may lead to evolution. This is what is being taught as fact to 10-year-olds in the UK. The concept of, quote, millions of years, end quote, a statement at odds with the Bible's timeline of around 6,000 years since creation, shows how ingrained the idea now is in the worldly education system, which has completely removed God from itself within a 100 years. A great article on the unbelievably unscientific basis for the new curriculum in the UK can be found on a link on the Bible in the News website against this article. And for those seeking general advice on the issue, the latest Bible magazine from January 2015 has many articles on evolution. In particular, there is an article entitled Evolution or the Bible? What do we tell the children? Which gives practical advice to parents dealing with evolution being taught to their children. The indoctrination of society through a biased education means that to challenge the idea of evolution is now perceived as insane and ludicrous. The simple words of the Bible are considered as nonsense by the wise of this world. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Exodus 20, verse 11. The latest March 2015 issue of National Geographic magazine illustrates the hostility now held towards the biblical account of creation. In a bold typeface, the cover reads, The War on Science. The issue deals with sections of American society at odds with the claims of modern science. A list of statements at variance with mainstream thinking are listed. Climate change does not exist. The moon landing was fake. Vaccinations can lead to autism. GMO is evil. And mixed in with these fairly well-established concepts is the big one. 
Evolution never happened. Yes, they have put this topic up there with the moon landing was fake. In their view, those who hold to the idea that evolution does not explain the origin of life are like conspiracy theorists who deny the moon landings and don't accept that climate change occurs. The secular media is not willing to admit, though, that the whole idea of life being brought about by a process of evolution is, in fact, based on assumption and faith. True science is based on observable results. Collins' English Dictionary defines science as the systematic study of the nature and behaviour of the material and physical universe based on observation, experiment and measurement, and the formulation of laws and to describe these facts in general terms. Now all would accept this. If something can be observed, we know it to be true. The problem with society around us is that the idea of observable science is mixed in with the assumptions of scientists. It is rare that this is ever clearly distinguished. The assumption is often presented as an observable fact. Scientists measure and observe the world around them. Evolutionists assume the laws which they discover have always been there. They do this because they do not believe in a being outside of those laws. Within the concept of evolution, there are actually smaller definitions. What does one mean by the term evolution? We have cosmic evolution, the origin of space and matter. We have chemical evolution, the origin of higher elements. We have stellar evolution, the origin of stars and planets. Organic evolution, the origin of life from non-living matter. We then have macro evolution, the changing from one kind to another. And then finally, we have micro evolution, variations within kinds. Now all of these different subsections are lumped together under the general label of evolution. Of all of these, there is actually only one which can be truly observed today. The last one, variations within kinds. We can observe the different varieties within various kinds of animal. There are different kinds of chicken. There are different kinds of dog and kinds of cow. The chicken, however, will always be a chicken. We never see a chicken becoming a donkey. This observable fact is in keeping with the biblical record. Genesis chapter 1 verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Now, evolutionist scientists extrapolate from their observance of the development of variations within kinds of animals that one kind of animal could have eventually changed into another kind of animal. This is their answer to how the various kinds of animals came into existence. They then extrapolate further and use this concept to explain where things like elements and matter has come from. The big problem, of course, is that scientifically speaking, nothing can come from nothing. And this fact has got around with the mystical theory of the Big Bang, where nothing somehow exploded and became everything. Again, assumption, but often presented as fact. If evolutionist scientists and the media were truly honest, they would have to accept that because these extrapolations have never been observed, they actually require faith for them to believe this. Faith in the idea that by adding billions of years, variations would eventually produce completely different kinds of animal. That new information could be added to the gene pool. Faith that everything exists down to chance. For those of us who believe in an almighty God, 
We see these variations as an amazing example of his wonderful wisdom in his creation, in building in flexibilities into what he has created. We have no problem in believing that he created the earth in six days. Both of these views require faith. We have a choice of what to believe. Having a belief in the Bible is not at odds with observable science. One of the most misrepresented things in the media is the impression that all credible scientists believe in evolution. This is absolutely not the case. A quick Google for creation scientists will throw up a number of lists of creation scientists who are experts in their field and contributors to modern science. The fact that they believe in creation and in intelligent design has nothing to do with the observable scientific discoveries they have unearthed. Sir Isaac Newton is well known as one of the greatest scientists who has ever lived. Many people do not realise that this man held a deep belief in God and that he looked at his scientific investigations as a way to a greater knowledge of a creator God. He stated, quote, This most beautiful system of the sun, planets and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent being. This being governs all things, not as the soul of the world, but as Lord over all. And on account of his dominion, he is wont to be called Lord God or universal ruler. The supreme God is a being eternal, infinite, absolutely perfect. Far then from being opposed to observable science, a belief that all things have been created will actually allow a scientist to expect patterns and logic in what he observes. This was certainly a benefit in Isaac Newton's case. Observable science is not at odds with the Bible. The Bible is not at war with true science, as the National Geographic wants us to believe. In terms of the origin of life, we do have a choice, though. To accept the biblical account of creation or to adopt the assumptions of evolutionist scientists. The question we have to answer for ourselves, though, is upon what will we place our trust? The evidence needs to be weighed up and a personal decision made. Whichever way we turn, we will need faith. Faith in the Bible or faith in the ever-changing evolutionist theories. Here on Bible in the News, we often speak of the amazing prophecies which show the Bible to be a solid foundation on which to trust. The things predicted and that have been fulfilled prove that the scriptures have been caused to be written by a being outside of the usual rules of science, an all-powerful being who can foresee the future unlike any man. Once this is understood and believed, then one starts to trust in the Bible, God's word. Scientifically speaking, it is not possible to turn water into wine, as we are told Jesus did. Scientifically speaking, it is not possible to part the Red Sea, as we, we are told that Moses did. We have faith in these things because we understand God is outside of the general laws he has created. He is an almighty God. We understand this because of our appreciation for things like Bible prophecy. If we decide that evolutionary science is right, though, if we decide there is no God, then we have to accept that we are condemned by the Bible. We read in Psalm 14, verse 1, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And in Romans 1, we have a passage which is most relevant to this consideration and gives us pause for thought. We read there, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them, 
For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools." And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. To dishonour their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed for ever. Amen. Romans 1, verses 18 to 25. We contend then with society around us. The Bible is at war with the ideas of the evolutionist mainstream secular media. It is at war with the ideas of man which have explained away mankind's existence by removing God from their minds. But it is not at war, though, with true science with science which is observable. This has been Matt Davies joining you. Tune in again next week for another Bible in the News, God willing.